Don't forget to back up your game first before attempting anything in this video. And remember, not everything you see is achievable because of different screen dimensions, editing, rendering, and PC specs. Hi guys, and welcome to my Sims 2 Ultimate Visual and Gameplay Guide. I want to start out by saying that this is all based on my own experience and preferences when it comes to, you know, playing The Sims 2. I will be talking about the visual aspects of the game, like reshade, custom content, and settings. But I will also be adding a second half where I talk about gameplay, how to build, how to create your own world, and many tutorials on things that I think you might want to know if you're playing The Sims 2 for the first time. Feel free to skip to whatever part that speaks to you the most. I personally wanted to make this video accessible to anyone regardless of experience, so there will be a tutorial or a how-to-do for most of the things I'm explaining. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Don't forget to check out the description because I will link websites and timestamps down below so you don't have to look for the things I'm talking about yourself. And it's important to note that I took out all of my custom content so you can clearly see the difference that every step makes. Let's start at number one, settings and performance. Before you start The Sims 2, keep in mind two things your PC specs and the dimensions of your screen. For this part, I'm going to assume that you already installed The Sims 2 and have set the game options to however you like. These are my game options. Unless your graphic card cannot run The Sims 2 in HD settings, you always want to set everything to the max. Here's the before and after settings from low to max. As you can see, the screen dimension normally has a limit, but mine goes all the way to 1600 times 900. This is my max because my screen isn't any wider, but if you have a bigger screen, you can increase the size. Let me show you how to do this. First, locate your downloads folder and go into your most recent expansion. For me, since I have everything, that is Mention a Garden. So you want to go into Mention a Garden stuff, TS Data, Res, and Convict. There are a few things we want to do. First, we want to click on SETI and turn all three of them to three. This basically means that the game will always give you the best quality, no matter what. We also want to find a section that is about three quarters down to the bottom that's called screen resolution. Now, the way that this works is basically you have a maximum height and a maximum width. If you were to put your screen to my dimension, you can totally put 1920 because it doesn't really matter. See, you can put here the maximum that the game is willing to give you, but if your screen is just not able to go that wide, there is no way that you're actually going to get that quality. And the option might not even show up. However, it doesn't really hurt to put it. So it's really up to you what you put, but I would recommend just putting something like 1920 and then 1080 and do that for all four of them. You just want to change the first two of each row you don't really have to mess with the bottom two. When you go back into game, you have a higher resolution to choose from. Turning off reflections, view distance, and shadows are also known to help speed up your game if you have problems with lag or frame drop. You'll want to find the shortcut that you use to start up your game. The quickest way to do that is to right click on the shortcut that is most likely on your desktop. Go into properties and then at target, add a W and a dash. So there's one space, one dash, and a W, and then click apply and press OK. That should make The Sims 2 run in Windows mode. This might sound odd, but The Sims 2 is built to run on older computers and graphic cards. In fact, it ran better on my old computer than it does on my newer one, so yes. Perhaps not what you expected, but having a 32-bit computer can also totally make the difference. Just thought I'd mention that. I got a specific question about improving the frame rate. See, The Sims 2 has a max on the quality it can achieve and it uses mostly your CPU. It might not recognize whatever CPU or graphic card you use, so it's making up for what it doesn't understand with the drop in frame rate. I'll include some web pages I found on this subject because I myself am not that experienced in this. However, having a frame rate around 30 is actually pretty normal. Common problems and fixes. Something you may have noticed when installing The Sims 2 on a newer PC or just with better graphic card is that sometimes the game does this funny little thing where it flashes pink or red. And there could also be a problem with the shadows. Red or pink flashing could be a sign that there are some graphic card issues or simply a mesh missing from custom content. Perhaps you recently removed some content. 
If not, here are some common fixes to these problems. Make sure that your graphic card is listed in the video cards.sgr. It is in your Sims 2 installation folder. If it's not in there, we can use this program called Graphics Rule Maker. Let me show you how that's done. After downloading the program, click on I agree and select a place for installation. After opening Graphics Rule Maker, you can either click on Locate Game or Browse for the right installation path. Click on Auto Detect Settings and then click on Save Files. After clicking on Save Files, it will tell you which graphic card you're currently using. I am using a GeForce GTX 1050 and this is missing in the video card database. So by saving the files, it will automatically add them. Of course, we want to click on yes. There is also a 4GB patch you can try and install. This basically forces your game to use more, more memory. I have heard that it works for some people, so I did want to mention it. Right click on your shortcut and then it will tell you the location of your game. This is the application that, you know, loads up your game. This is the one you want to patch. So we're going to click on open. It says that now it has been patched. That's all you do to patch it and I guess give it a try. You might want to try reinstalling the game if the problem still occurs after this. And maybe not the most practical advice, but if you have a lower end graphics card, you might want to upgrade. Then there is the shadow problem. Here's a clip of a video of mine on that topic. Starting on Mod The Sims, we are going to use a mod called The Sims Shadow Fix. And this is basically what it looks like when your game is not fixed. And these are the options that you can choose from. There are some known issues, but I think it is all worth it in the end. So you do want to go ahead and read this. We can do two things. We can use or restore our shadows in graphic rules, or we can just go ahead and install this mod. First, let's pick a version. So this just depends on what kind of, you know, shadow you want. For me, I do really like the strong one, so I am going to be downloading number 4. In case this doesn't work, we are also going to do this method. We're going to go back into our folder and find the same graphic rules .sgr that we have been using for the first 7 minutes of this video. If you have used the graphic rule maker, it could be that your file looks a little different than the one from Amatosim. So here it says graphic rules maker tweak always disable sim shadow. So it's up to you whether or not you keep it like this. You can still put true here if that's something you want. You can try it. You can always change it back. It just depends on you and what your wishes are. But feel free to try this if this mod on its own doesn't work. See if it works for you after doing this. Pretty confident that the mod itself will work. If you want to turn the shadows back on, you can simply open Graphic Rules Maker again and unselect that option. I'm actually going to leave mine on false and I am going to install this mod. You want to put this file into downloads. Now, as you guys can see, I actually don't have a folder called downloads or mods. So what we're going to do is simply go ahead and make one. Okay. And then we'll just go ahead and drag this file into here. And this is what that looks like. And then we're going to go ahead and open up our game and see if that fixed anything. As you can see, we're currently a game and there is no black box. While on the topic of custom content, I will show you how to delete faulty content or just content in general, because if there is one thing The Sims 2 is good at, it's getting corrupt. The world doesn't load, T-pose, flashing CC, and of course, the crashes. Now, while this is not actually, in my opinion, the worst thing you can do in the game, this is a possible way to cause corruption. I'm talking about using the bin icon from within the game. Once you download some CC, by clicking on the icon, you can get rid of that item. I'm showing you this in particular because in an old tutorial, I was specifically encouraging this behavior and now I like to do the opposite. Let's get a little deeper into this. There are many in-game things you can do to cause corruption. 
here's a list of things I think you should avoid doing in The Sims 2. Linking that down below because you don't need me to talk an extra 10 minutes when the work has already been done for you and me. Just avoid doing these things and you're good to go. There are a few mods you can install that can help you with detecting or preventing corruption. I'll be linking those websites down below, but I'll show you how to install some of them. Some are files you plop into your downloads folder, others are programs you have to open up when the game isn't running. I'll be talking about programs later on in this video. Lastly, I'll go into game to show you what these items look like. I recommend you to mess around with these things in a hood you don't really care about. Let me show you better ways to delete custom content. There are programs like CC Cleaner and SimPE that could help you with cleaning CC, but there is another way. The easiest thing to do is to add the items you no longer want onto your sim in Body Shop. Then you want to open that file and see what kind of CC comes with it. That is how I would do it. But let's say your game crashes when you click on an item. Well, either you ignore the CC and mentally make a note not to click on it, or you can hover over it to see what it's called and try to find it. Unfortunately, if it has no name, you might have to take out every folder you have until you found the right one. Cleaning CC is easy. Load up the folder with the items and watch out for the colors. Red doesn't always mean a bad thing, so make sure to read the instructions. Right click on an item and press delete. You can also organize with this program by clicking here. And lastly, this is how you install with CC Cleaner. Simple, right? I almost forgot, but here's a small body shop tutorial for those who are new to The Sims. I'll be showing you how to make your own custom content as well as how to export Sims. So I'm going to show you how to use The Sims 2 Body Shop for two reasons. One, I'm going to show you how to export Sims and two, I am going to show you how to make your own custom content. Now, I am not super familiar with this process, so there might be some flaws in what I'm telling you, but I think I've got the basic principles down. I feel confident enough to share this with you guys. So let's start with exporting Sims. So first, we're going to build or clone a Sim. Now, this is where if you've downloaded Sims, the Sims will show up. This is also a place where you will find some Max's Sims or some custom Sims you've made. So let's say we want to bring Billy into our game. Now, because of the file that Billy was, I have already technically installed him. So we don't really need to go ahead and export him again. But let's say we didn't have him and we did want to export him. So we can either build a sim or we can clone. And let's just say we're done. So now there are two. On to packaging sims. This is where all of your sims that you've either cloned or made show up. What we want to do is click on one of them and then package sim to file, give it a name. Exported sims are in your package sims folder. Then when we click on his package file, it will tell you exactly what kind of custom content he's using, but it will also allow us to install him and the content, and then we can open him up in the game. This is how you can put your sims up for download. All right, onto the trickier part. First, let's create genetics. And I am going to keep it simple and I'm going to make some eye colors. So I'm going to pick this green color and we're going to turn it into something different. I'm going to call it eyes. You want to find this folder. Once you're there, we're going to click on eyes and this is where our textures are. Now I only really want to change the inside of his eye, but you can totally change the outside too if that's something you wanted. I'm going to make this... Yeah, let's do a red color instead of blue, or should I just go for the blue anyway? No, let's do this color. Let's keep it simple. And then simply go ahead and save this as a BMP file. Click refresh preview sim. And boom, we're done. And then you can also import it to your game. It's nice, huh? Now let's go ahead and change some hair. There's many different textures, right? And the only thing that I can recommend you guys is to basically just mess around, right? Try to color them all a different color, see what shows up, what is what. Honestly, from a casual simmer who doesn't necessarily make a lot of custom content, this would be very intimidating, right? But trying to simplify the process by just advising you to 
recolor different, you know, files, different textures and seeing what shows up and what doesn't show up. I think that is a much easier way of doing things. That being said, not every layer shows up like on this one, but it doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't work. And this being said, I am just showing you how to recolor things. I'm not actually showing you how to make hair from scratch. That process is way more difficult and I am simply not experienced enough to show you how to create your own custom content. So instead, I'm going to leave some links to professionals who do this on a regular basis and know exactly what they're talking about. And of course, you do the exact same process with clothing. I may feel backwards, but I'm going to show you how to install custom content after showing you how to delete custom content. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to download and install custom content for The Sims 2. So do you see where it says catalog, display, custom content and dialogue at startup? You want to set these both to on. You click on the display custom content dialog button. Make sure that this is on enable custom content. So this is pretty much all you want to do in your game. And now as a second step, I'm going to show you where exactly you want to put your item. There are two types of files that you'll most likely be downloading. Either a Sims 2 pack file or a Sims 2 package file. I'm going to get these boxers and then I am also going to get a sim clicking on our sim so sims and houses usually come in a sims 2 pack i'm using sims 2 pack clean installer to install this if you don't have that usually what happens when you double click on this is that you get a little pop-up window saying you're about to install this sim and the custom content that comes with it and you really do not get a choice what you want to download basically you're going to get the whole package but with sims 2 pack clean installer you can actually select what you want to come with the sim so in case you do not want the classes for some reason we can simply opt out of this and get everything else isn't that just great like i wish this was around back when i didn't know that it was around <laughs> strong story so i'm gonna go ahead and install this and uh, it says that we actually already have a no shader package, so no, I don't want another one. So now that this one is installed, let me show you the difference between a Sims 2 pack and a Sims pack. I should actually call it a dot package file because really that's more what it is. If you're downloading a dot package file, you want to put those into your downloads folder. While on the topic of downloading custom content, I want to tell you guys a little bit about order in which the game recognizes custom content. Custom content gets priority depending on the name. So the closer it is in the alphabet, the more priority it has. Don't use any custom signs as it slows down the loading of the CC. And I cannot forget to mention to limit the amount of subfolders. So stick to one or two and not four folders deep. And if you are certain of keeping something, you can always merge items. I will show you how to do that in just a second, but first let's check out our sim. As you can see, these are our boxers. And then let's turn him into a female and let's search for the sim that we just downloaded. Okay, here she is. Okay, so this is what she looks like and she did come with some CC as you guys saw earlier. Off screen, I'll add back all of my downloads that I already had but took out for the sake of this video. So next time you see my game, we should have a lot more stuff to work with. But first, let me show you how to merge CC. I'll be linking this website down below, but this is the program we're going to be using to merge our CC. So you want to give this a good read. Click on CC Merger to open the program. And this is basically all that we're going to need to merge CC. Now, before I do this, I want you guys to listen very closely, very carefully. When you merge CC, please, for the love of everything, do not merge mods. Do not merge script files. Do not merge anything other than clothes, maybe hair, um, but include the meshes as well, okay? So don't just merge the file, merge the mesh. Meshes are super important. Hairstyles, clothing, makeup, all of that is fine with me. Just do not merge mods. Just don't do it. Just don't even think about it. And then we're gonna 
click on one of our folders and basically we're just going to merge the whole folder and once it's done it says packages merged successfully you'll see here that we have a new file called 110 and it basically merged all of this into one file so next time you open the game the game should load a little faster what i would suggest you to do is put all of this into one folder and then put that folder somewhere else test out the game if everything works you can still go ahead and remove all of this but first just test this out before you get rid of everything just promise yourself this <laughs> now the best way to change the whole look of the game would be to install reshade whether you use g-shade or reshade it's basically the same filter for your game with a few added extras well 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 look at that i did a video on that before as well hey guys and welcome back to my channel my name is nana and today i am going to show you how to install reshade check my description for videos i watched and websites i read i will include these because my video may not be the one to work for you the blogs or websites will have some information on what to do or things that could go wrong and how to fix them. As I was downloading Reshade, I did notice a few things that were not working and going wrong and I myself did not really know where to go so I'm going to link all of this information for you guys so you don't have to do it. I want to refer you to the description box but if there are any other questions that I haven't answered in this video, feel free to leave a comment and I'll try and get back to you. Download Reshade plus Reshade presets. Find your Sims 2 installation folder. Choose your latest expansion pack. For me, that is Mansion and Garden, EP9. If you have the Ultimate Collection, EP9 would be fun with pets. It has to be the folder of installation, not the one in which you keep your download. If you have any pre-existing installations, click Select Game, then click again to uninstall the reshade. If you don't have any existing installations, start by enable disable reshade in Vulgan globally. Browse Sims 2 and go into the folder I mentioned earlier. Select Sims 2 EP9 application. For rendering, start out by using the recommended, which is Direct 3D9. If the game crashes during loading, try Direct 3D 10 11 12. If the game still crashes during loading, Use Reshade version 4 instead of version 3. If the game crashes during loading of the hood, keep on watching. If the game doesn't and you're able to see Reshade and use it as normal with the game obviously working normally as well, you're done. Congrats, and I'm jealous because <laughs> for me it wasn't that easy. I've noticed that Reshade sometimes won't work when you select all the shaders, so make sure to try installing the default ones first and see if that helps. If the game still doesn't work, we're going to go over to our help section of this video. I have some problems and some fixes that may or may not help you. They help me because these previous steps weren't enough for the game to work. For some people, Reshade works using Reshade 3.0 and so forth. For me, Reshade gives an error during loading using the 3 version, but loads up using Reshade 4.9. If the game crashes before getting to pick a hood using version 3, use version 4. If the game crashes during the hood loading or any other version, try the following method. Download Xenos. Google Chrome will say it's a virus and your antivirus will delete the file. To avoid this, turn off Chrome protection until download is complete. Turn on Chrome protection, then turn off antivirus. Once Xenos is in the right folder, add it to exclusions, then turn antivirus back on. Extract Xenos, the file without 64 and extract it to the sims2 installation folder. sims2 installation folder, TS bin, and put it there. Make a shortcut of the sims2 ep9 application to desktop. Make a shortcut of the dxdi.dll file, which automatically gets created during installation of reshade. If you don't have this file, simply reinstall Reshade. Open Xenos, manual launch, and select the Sims 2 shortcut you just made. Click add, then select the shortcut you just made of the dxgi.dll. Click inject, then open up your game using the shortcut. If the shortcut you have created goes full screen, 
make sure to add the dash w. Oh, and don't forget to run Xenos every time before opening the game. I also want to mention that having these links and shortcuts sometimes isn't enough to work the first time. And it may be required that you try and repeat this process like three or four times. I'm not sure why this is, but sometimes these steps work the first try and sometimes it takes like two or three tries. So don't be discouraged when it doesn't work the first time and make sure to give it a good few tries. Are some bugs known to happen during the use of reshade? I will show you some that I've been unable to find a reason for. It doesn't happen to everyone, but it did happen to me and it may happen to you. There are a few things you could do to temporarily fix this though. As for a cure, I don't know. Turn off smooth edges. If you can't do that, I can't do it either, then don't worry about it. I'm not sure why that is, but try turning off reflections. That did the trick for me. Try lowering some settings, mess around with the shadows, or maybe it's some mod conflicting. I really don't know 100% why this is happening, so I'm just guessing at this point. Go into your graphics rule, which is located into your Sims 2 installation folder. TS data, res, config, graphic rules. Under constants, turn your seti low from a 1 to a 2. Search dynamic, control plus F, and turn all three of them to a 0. Save, and try again. After a while, reshade stopped working for me, so now I'm using G-Shade. I wish I could show you how to install this, but I simply cannot at this time. I can tell you that I'm using the experimental option in the settings, and that my current preset is Strudel by Elena but I tweaked it to fit my taste. It is currently involved in a bit of a controversy and there are rumors going on that it's malware or spyware, or that there might be a virus inside that could do things to your computer without your permission. I cannot recommend something that has a reputation like that, but all I can say is that I'm using it regardless and I have no problems and it works wonderful and I like it better than Reshade. Do with this information what you want. I'll be linking this website down below, but basically this is the post that we're going to be using to download this white or clean UI um, mod for The Sims. I'm gonna click on the big green download button and then let's install this together. There is one for downloads and there is one for installation. Downloads is what you're gonna eventually put into your downloads folder. Installation is gonna go into your installation folder. So those two folders are completely different. Let's start with the downloads folder. So this is what's inside of the downloads folder. Now this one is gonna go directly into downloads. Actually, let's just all put them into downloads right away. So when we're in here, we're just going to click on these and in each of these folders, you'll have two or three options. And basically you only want one of two and not both of them because that doesn't work. And then we're gonna do the same thing for all of them. Make sure you kind of read on, you know, your screen dimensions, which your game can handle. This is what you're going to put in your base game folder. If you don't know where to go, there are instructions. Put this in base game, put this in mansion and garden, put this in open for business, so forth, so forth. And of course there is a text document that will help you with the location, but that's basically all you do, put them in the right folder. And Ever since making that video, they've also done a black and pink version. Let's do a quick cast tutorial while we are here. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Nana, and today I'm doing something that I've never done before in The Sims 2. So today I'm going to make my own cast background. I might be like, Nana, what's the point? There's so many out there. I am really loving the aesthetic Sims 2, Sims 4, Sims everything. And to be honest, I wanted something nice to look at. If I could kill it, I would. I've considered it. So I googled how to make your own background because the girl had no idea. Apparently, it wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. You just have to know what to do. I guess it helps when you know what to do when you don't know what to do. Step one was to open up a new world. After exiting, we have to open up our folder. My latest expansion pack is mentioned in Garden. You want to drag one or both files into your Sims 2 folder. The one you also use for downloads and plop that into the lot catalog folder. You have to name it after your highest x000 something number. For me, that was number 157, so I made 158 and 159. You'll find this new lot and upon placing it, you can enter it and customize it just like you would with any other lot. So the theme I had in mind was pink and I wanted to make it a soft pink. 
I did try this beige color. It didn't really look right and the lighting didn't look right. In the end, I think it turned out really nice. Like, it, you know, it's never gonna be perfect, but I really like it and I think it's different. I haven't quite found a cast background that looks like this just in case I thought I should make it as CZ free as I can. However, I realized that everything in there is CZ from the rug to the window to the poof. I'm not really sure if I even want to post this online because I, well, I made it for myself and I feel like if other people are going to be able to download it, well, how can I brag about having something you guys don't have and everyone has it? I'm making this video to show you guys how to do it yourself. So it's not like I am just here bragging about my new cast background. It looks so good. So once we're done, we want to go over to my documents, EA games and the neighborhoods, and then we'll find a number of neighborhoods. I was a little confused because it said that there was only be one file into that folder because we've only really made one lot. However, when I clicked on the folder to find the lot, there were like nine or so, nine of them. I copied that into my downloads folder and then I renamed it. Make sure you only have one of them in there. And I went back into the game. It was honestly so easy. I feel like everyone can do it. And this is how it turned out. I personally think it looks really nice and I'll probably, well, I'll probably be using it. There's one big thing I do not want to forget. If your sims are freezing, you can download a file that I'll leave a link to down below. Now that I've got the basics covered, let's talk about the game itself. This is where the visual aspect and the practical gameplay sort of overlapping a bit. I think having a hood that you love already helps to change the visual aspects of the game. There are so many different hoods out there so choosing one you love shouldn't be too hard and if you're picky you can just get all of them. If you really want to have a major gameplay update you should download a subhood. See subhoods work kind of like university worlds. You know how you can't move worlds without losing all of your memories and relationships? Well playing with subhoods works a little like this. Let's say you live in Pleasant View, but you want to move to Strange Town. That's not possible. But what if Strange Town is university? Then you could move back and forth without losing anything, right? That's basically what a subhood is. I don't use it, but definitely check it out. Let me also introduce you to some cheats. Help shows you a list of cheat codes. Motherload adds 50,000 simoleons to your household. Kaching adds 1,000 simoleons. Move objects on allows you to move or delete objects you couldn't before. Family funds allows you to give a certain amount of money to your family. So the way that you will write this is family funds plus family name plus amount with a space between each word. Bullprop constrained floor elevation true or false changes the elevation helps create split level. Bullprop snap objects to grid true or false allows you to place objects outside the grid. Prop allow 45 degree angle of rotation true or false allows you to place objects at an angle. And of course, bullprop testing cheats enabled true or false allows you to bring up a whole menu of cheats for the Sims 2. Let's talk about installing lots and packaging lots. You want to go to your hood and click on this icon, then go here and click here, do this and voila, house is ready. Beware, everything custom content related will also transfer with a lot. So you're giving someone more than just a shell. How to install lots? You download a file and instead of putting it into your downloads folder, you double click it. Believe it or not, the way you build your houses, the layout, the colors, it all changes and helps your world feel more visually pleasing. I like to build my own world and pick colors that all work together or will go with everything. Imagine making a house that looks completely different from anything else in your game. Now imagine a house with a few basic colors that will go into every house with a few accent colors. Stick to a color scheme and accentuate with a few colors. Let me show you a few things that you can do that you might not know how to. I'm going to show you how to make a basement, how to create L shaped or u-shaped stairs and i'm going to show you how to get this let's start out with this one in the corner so i'm going to show you how to do these stairs first what i'm going to do is we're going to activate this cheat and i'm also going to activate this cheat just to be sure so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over here to terrain and then i'm going to raise the terrain then what i'm going to do is get the foundation and dragging from the highest point towards the lowest we're going to create our foundation this is what this looks like make sure to delete all the tiles on the top floor then we're going to place stairs on one side so let's go ahead and 
let's say we're one stairs on this side. Okay, so that will be our base. Now, next, what we want to do is we want to connect the stairs to the upper floor. So now we're going to add our tiles. So I think um, we should just place some stairs over here. So we're going to select our stairs. Make sure we select our square. And then we can just fill in the top floor as we normally would. Uh, I think you get the idea. Okay, so that was these stairs. Let's go over to the garage. Now for the garage, we're gonna make a base level house or a base level room. And on either end, we want to place a foundation, just one, two, however much you want, but we only really need one. With the same level terrain tool, we're gonna grab one end, drag it towards the other and level the whole thing. As you see, the wall now acts as a foundation. I know I said I was gonna show you how to create garages, but I meant more so split level. Now, as for basements, so what we want to do is first we want to lower the terrain and we're gonna get that same brush, the first one, and we're going to find the lowest point and kind of drag it down like this. Now, as you can tell, there is really not much of a difference. So I'm actually going to lower it quite a bit more and then we're gonna get our foundation and we're just going to drag it like so. We want to cover those weird bits, those weird edges. And if it's looking a little weird, grab that same one up again and lower the foundation. Um, I think it's doing a little bit of a weird thing in the corner because of the raised terrain on the sides, but that usually doesn't really happen. And now we have our, our basement. So what we can do next is add some paint and then we can add some stairs and now you have a basement custom content for your neighborhood is what's really going to change things just look at my collection trees objects items roads skies clouds water and cars houses so many things highly highly recommend getting this also if you go over to my blog i have a list of everything that i have currently in my neighborhood so if you're interested go get it this might be the biggest hood portion of this video how to build your own world first up you can either download an empty world or make one through SimCity. this is how you do that we're going to use a program or a game called SimCity 4 and what we're going to do when you load up the game you want to pick a city you want to pick a place for your new city now when you're in there we're going to do a couple of things so let's rotate this so one thing i want you to remember when making your own world is that whatever you do here is opposite in the sim so if you want to make a road on the left side it's going to appear on the right side so that is something you do want to keep in mind this is entirely up to you and i highly suggest you just to mess around with it this is how you create water it's by creating craters add some hills yeah why not let's do that like that okay we got some hills uh, what else do we want we maybe we want some mountains yeah let's add some mountains on the edges isn't that beautiful okay so let's say you're like oh wow this is the best thing i've ever ever done in my life okay so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into mayor mode and this is where we're gonna establish or save our city so i'm just gonna call it new city and I'm going to click on establish city and then now we can add some roads. So let's say we want to add some roads just around the edges. So we'll just click and drag in a straight line because the Sims does not recognize. Oh, the game doesn't recognize any curves. So you're going to have to basically draw everything in a straight line. Um, and then if these edges like show up a little, you know, transparent, could just click on them. I don't think it really makes a difference. I'm not 100% sure, but that's what you could do. Just, you know, be careful because every piece of road, like I said, let me just add some little ones. Uh, make sure, you know, where you place your, your things because it, it will show up. You can also add bridges. Now, bridges are formed when you just hold like one end of, um, I guess one end of a road towards the next. Uh, the game doesn't really recognize many different bridges. I think this is the one that it does recognize the most. I mean, that's the one I always use. So you basically hold it over like a place, a spot where you want to add a bridge. For me, that's usually over water. And when we're done with that, we do want to go ahead and save it. 
and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and find this file so the file is most likely going to be located into your sim city region depending on the name you give it you might have to look for it but i had to I have to actually go around and look for mine but this is the one it's called sim city new city twin i think because everything is called new city it just kind of like puts it in this folder so make sure you give it an original name but we're gonna cut this we're gonna go and find our sc4 terrains folder and we're gonna just dump that baby in there just like so and then we're gonna open up our game we're gonna create a custom neighborhood and you're going to load up the file the sc4 file that you just made so i have quite a few as you can see let's load this up oh wait did i make a big city this is bad of me but i totally forgot to mention that you can only make small cities so if you just made a gigantic city like this it's not gonna work we need to make a smaller city so this no bueno you gotta find something that's a little bit more like this somehow we've made it back to this world as you see i already added a few things those things are going to come after this portion of the video but i felt like i wanted to show you how to really build a world before i went into like the nitpicky things what you see first reshade is on i've got a water overlay i've got clouds and i've got a skybox as they call it so next what you want to do is we're going to activate a couple of cheats and this is basically going to ensure that the whole world is flat sometimes you have a smaller object like this and it will just kind of look like you know like it's not laying down it's just do you see what i mean so we want to make sure that that doesn't happen now before you start make sure that what you're going to do now is what you start with okay because you want to start out by flattening the whole thing to your liking so you do not want to start flattening things after you place down everything something's always going to go wrong and the hood saves itself okay there's no undo button you place something down it's down and if you for example done your whole your whole hood and then something happens and it's messed up and there's like a black line in the middle something like this but in the middle of your screen you're gonna have to redo everything i am going to show you a few things you can do with your hood and just show you how i would do it okay let's get started with the cheats this is the cheat code you want to enter make sure it's on if you want to use it and it's off when you don't want to use it there's this post online that i found when i didn't know how to do this the first time that i'm going to refer you to just because i have no idea how to call these keys so you press these and that's how you work it <laughs> i want to level almost everything i'll hold this and sometimes this doesn't show up that's because of a mod that is something that you have to like look out for because it does work like the mod works it just doesn't look like it works so as you can see pressing this button it raises near the button it does the opposite let me find a decent height pretty much gonna just like take the spot as a reference point so let's say this this is our reference point this green line so we're gonna go over here sometimes it says like it doesn't work but really just don't pay any attention to it it does it just kind of tell you like oh i can't do it because there's a house there but we can always just like go ahead and delete the lot and i do also want to mention like i am definitely not a professional like i literally just do whatever the heck i want sometimes you do things and it doesn't really work in this case it's it's really just it's really just trial and error you know like you just you just have to mess around and and come up with <laughs> come up with a solution to some of these problems i'm not gonna make it perfect okay but it all it's all more flattened out how about just okay it's not exactly what i wanted but how about i just flatten out this whole thing here just the whole thing it's gonna look really weird but it's fine at least we can place things down not too close to the edge because that usually doesn't <laughs> there it is there it is not too close to the edge or you're gonna get this sometimes not always sometimes you can fix this by raising the terrain sometimes but not always and in this case i don't think it's fixable so we're just gonna have to look at this forever and unless we make a new world but i'm really not gonna like i'm really not gonna start over we're just gonna ignore the big fat black line in the middle if i look at this i'm like okay there's a lot of free space here it looks like a very i mean with the background a very beachy world could be part of the beach but i'm very much into like farmland so maybe i'm gonna change the background to something else how about we turn it into something a little bit more 
green. I'm gonna get, um, how about I add this? It's actually a favorite of mine. Wow, isn't that beautiful? Mm -mm, just amazing. I tend to put like farmhouses near farmland and then when I go ahead and build in those houses, I try to make it really look like it's part of that farm. So usually what I do is if I can find it relatively quickly, I will give them like a little shed. I don't necessarily see it right away. Okay, but just imagine this just imagine this is a shed, okay? And then just I'll put a shed here, I'll put a shed there, and then I'll add some like maybe some bushes around. Where are those trees again? Those are nice. This is usually what I use for like my more richer folk. Like it it it's not part of it, but you kind of feel like it is if that makes sense also have or i had i'm not sure if i still have it but i had some functional lights which are nice because they do lit up at night in between we have like a little playground for the kids yeah guys there's so much <laughs> yeah that would be like my farmland okay beautiful and then i would be like oh okay blah, blah 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 maybe this is too much like i would get rid of this i would probably get rid of this it would i'm always i'm always into making like a rich area so i would make my rich area like Maybe like here. Oh, I wish I had more time. I could spend hours on this, but then that, this video would be like freaking forever. Oh, I tend to make my ridge areas kind of look like they're connected. I just, just think with me, ridge area, big houses. Um, and then I would probably use those, those fences, those bushes, these to kind of like stop it right here like oh wow it's like a secluded area maybe like a gate to get in something like that I really like boxing things in and then i would mostly probably make these houses like super big and i usually just make like one area with super expensive houses and then i have like the farmland because i really do love having a bit of both and then in between i would probably add maybe right here i would make like a park behind it maybe there is some more housing here but then these would be more like of the inexpensive houses so there's like a bunch of these right here and then in between it would be stores and you know, like I said, you can do so many things. You can even change the color of like rocks and stuff. And as you saw earlier, I also had some clouds. So like, honestly, like these are base game clouds, right? But I had some animated clouds, which I just can't find right off the bat, but I know I have them at, oh, here they are. These are day clouds. Let me just give you a quick look, okay, at our, at our world. It's not, you know, the most beautiful thing. I don't know why my mouse is refusing to look up. I think it's that black thing in the middle, but can you just imagine like coming into your hood and then you have like, I don't know, there's, there's life happening, right? Like even, I just did a sloppy, I really did a sloppy job, but does it not have a vibe to it? Like you can just feel the vibe. I mean, I feel it. I feel it. And then here's our rich area. <laughs> okay, so I think you get what I mean. Honestly, there's like thousands of things you can do. So I highly suggest just to play around with it and just really like enjoy it. Let me also show you a few examples of things you can do that are not done in like 20 minutes. <laughs>
Now, this is my favorite part, the custom content, the things you need to make this world your own. I'll just show you a few things you can get, but really, the sky's the limit. Well, actually more like your graphic card is, but you know, minor details. You can default replace grass, roads, trees. Again, I will show you a few things you can do, but the sky, your card, you know, something about limits. Sky boxes are boxes you put into the corner of your town to change the sky. Take a look at these. The arrow points in the direction you have to place it. Same goes for clouds. The good thing is that you can layer most of them. Outer overlay is as it says. Sims can really change the whole vibe of a town and personally, it's where I spend most of my time in cast. If you want a visually nice hood, make sure you spend some time in the sim. Genetic fixes are probably the best way to fix the most common same face syndrome. Almost every sim that you make ends up getting the same face from their parent and at the second or third child it ends up being a mix of the two, but it is also possible that every sim just looks like the other one. If you want more diverse children or you just want the genetic system in The Sims 2 to work better than it does, then this mod is for you. How to create sims after leaving Cass. This is where a mod comes into play, The Sims Blender. I absolutely love this mod. This is how you use it. For downloading the Sim Blender, you just want to go ahead and click the download link and put this into your downloads folder. When you're in game, your Sim Blender will look a little bit like this. Now, if you wanted to, you can go over to miscellaneous and change the object model. I use this for almost everything. Now, I said that I was going to show you how to do cast after cast, so I'll start with that first, but I feel like showing you guys all of the things. This is what he currently looks like. Let me stop him from looking at the birds. This is Julian and you know, he's not super attractive. He's not not attractive. He's I feel like he's just kind of okay. So what you want to do is click on the sim and then we can change his outfit to a swimwear. We can, I don't know, set his fitness to normal. Um, what else should we do with them? We can give him a tan. Now that he has a tan, let's go ahead and change his physical appearance. So you want to click on makeover and then there's two things you can do. So change appearance is basically like you're taking him to a dresser and you're changing his hair color and maybe giving him some makeup. Okay, it's, it's, it, he's a changed man. <laughs> And um, I mean, maybe this is not exactly, it's not getting, it's not getting any better. Anyway, let's just, no, no. Oh God, once I start, I can't stop. Okay, so let's just put this back on and let's change his face some more. Click on appearance and do plastic surgery. Now this is kind of like cast after cast. I don't know if you guys knew this, but if you right click on his face, it kind of like slightly changes it into this template. And let's give him some juicy lips. And then maybe we'll do something with his brows. Maybe we'll... Okay, there we go. And, <laughs> and now all we have to do is save him and we've done a little cast after cast. Now, of course, there is no actual way of changing eye color. Like I haven't really found a way to do that unless you buy contacts as makeup. If you do that, you can simply change the Sims eyes. But I typically, you know, I don't really change my Sims eye colors unless I really have to. But yeah, this is how you would change your Sim after cast. Now, let me show you some other things you can do. So we can also age him to any kind of life stage. Now, I don't really know what life stage he is right now. I think he's an adult. Yeah, he's an adult. So for the sake of it, let me, I'm in the wrong section. <laughs> let me age him to a young adult. Oh, now he has some pink shorts on. And as for his aspiration, so he's currently um, a left out loner and he wants to have 20 simultaneous friends so we can go ahead and max let's just max all residents and this brings his aspiration level to plat now 
if we want to change his, you know, his aspiration, we can just simply go over here and select something new for him. So let's say he's suddenly like really into fortune. We can change his turn ons. Maybe he suddenly likes nice smelling people and he hates great dancers. We also can randomize it if we wanted to do that, but I personally don't really care. I also would like to point out that this um, little box here is because of reshade and me, you know, putting my mods back in and out. Um, so don't be alarmed if you see something popping up. That's just a bit of a reshade thing. It's for family. Uh, we don't, we currently don't have any other family members, but if we were to have, let's say a wife, a, sp um, a spouse, um, a child, anyone, we can basically add a person or a sim to our family or change the dynamics between us. We also don't have a visitor, so I'm not really sure you know, if I can show you that, but you can basically change your family relationships with this one. Oh, wait, we have somebody uh, let's see if we can add Tiffany to the family. Yeah, here. So we can set her as our grandparents. Let's do that. And now we should have a relationship with her. We do have to greet her first. Now it says here that she is our family. She will not show up in a family tree, but she is technically family. And if we were to kiss her, we can family kiss her. So motives, it speaks for itself. You can select individual motives. You can select all of them and their needs will be filled. Then for pregnancy, we can make him pregnant. So let's have a baby with ourselves. It's just a bit strange, but hey ho. And then we can do a pregnancy scanner and it says here that we are pregnant. We are the father of our own baby. We are the father and the mother of our own baby. Then if we were to speed up time, let me go through it a bit more. We also have the option to accelerate, terminate, or suspend pregnancy. So if we were to accelerate it, you're basically going to go through the three days of pregnancy in like three hours. He's ready. He's ready to become a father. Now there he is his little cute baby bump. And then if we wanted to, we can, you know, we can um, suspend it and then he'll just stay in this stage forever. Now we can also change our relationships so we can set or remove them, you know, short term, long term. So short term is this one, the green one on top and long term is the bottom one. And then we can also give, um, give him some skills. So currently he has, oh, a few in cooking. So let's randomize him. Okay. He basically got the same ones, just a bit more if you really want to personalize your sims this is what i would recommend really go into the traits and like specify what his hobbies are if he has any badges his zodiac sign because if you change his zodiac sign in cast it's going to change the personality but if you do the personality first and then change his, um, him to being a libra for example you can have the zodiac sign but you don't have to have the you know the personality traits that come or the personality points that come with it we can also change his interest to you know anything we can randomize it we can also set his preferences we can also show his preferences so if we say show preferences it currently says he's not really into men or into women uh, it might change depending how much contact your sim has but sometimes you know for story purposes you do just want to go and just set it to something else so i want to make him buy let's do something something different now if we were to go over to his trades and no hold up to his trades and then show preferences it will say that he's both into male and females about for ones we can also change his lifetime want so his lifetime want currently is to become a world-class ballet dancer good for you but let's say I want something else. So what we can do is we can cycle the lifetime want or we can re-roll it. Now, if you cycle it, it will stay within the, you know, the aspiration that he has. But to add a one slot, this will add a section over here. I haven't actually tried to add like a, a ton of them. So let's see if there is a limit. I am pretty positive there is a limit. I'm just not really sure what the limit is. We can also just remove it and maybe then it'll work. Yeah, I think we just added a few too much, <laughs> but you get the idea. This is basically how that works. Okay, and then we can also um, teleport him if we want to do. So if you go over to more, there's a few more things we can do. We can randomize his personality, which are these traits. We can 
change someone's name and we can give him a career. So I'm going to do career first. We can give him any career and then we can set the level of the career and we can unlock all the rewards for the career. And there's also the option, you saw it earlier, to teleport. Now, if you enable summon menu, that means that you can pretty much teleport any sim, any townie from this world to this lot. It doesn't mean that you can teleport yourself. It means that other people from the town can teleport to you. So that's the difference. Now, as for one that I left to the end name. So you can't really change a sim's name the easy way. We're going to have to do it a little bit backwards, but this is how we want to do this. Okay, his name is Julian Cook. We want to change his name to... I don't know, let's say Barry. His name is Barry now. Like his name is Barry, Barry doesn't cook. So what we want to do first is we're going to change his first name to his last name. So we want to call him doesn't cook. We need to change his name to doesn't cook. First, we also have to find him. He's probably under J. Okay, so we want to make his first name doesn't cook. Then we're going to copy his first name to his last name. We have to go ahead, go through the same process, select the sim again. Don't, for, don't forget, he has a different name now. So his name starts with a D since I changed his first name to be his last name. So we need to go ahead and find doesn't cook, cook. So now his name is doesn't cook, doesn't cook. And now we can go ahead and change his first name again to Barry. I think we said Barry. Go ahead and select your sim again. And now we have Barry doesn't cook. That is basically everything you can do with um, the Sim Blender. And I recommend this mod. I think you guys are going to have a great time playing around with this mod. So definitely do check it out. Lighting plays a big part in transforming your world. Let me show you how to install this. Starting on this website, of course, I'll be linking all websites down in the description box down below. I want to note that I cannot show you the difference in my game because I have already replaced all my lighting. So I don't actually own the original files. I have replaced them. So there is no way for me to, you know, reverse that process. I would have to reinstall the game. And I really do not feel like doing that. So instead, I'm going to click on these pictures and show you the difference that the lighting makes. And you can compare it to your game. So you want to make sure you read through the installation instructions, but I am going to show you how to install this. So just follow along with me. And if you're wondering how to download this, you click on this link. Now, first you want to make sure you know what your version is. Okay. So if you have the ultimate collection, this is what you want to click on. You press this. If you have deluxe, if you have double deluxe, if it's not through origin, make sure you read this text. Also, make sure that you know what version of what kind of game you have. So you use the right folder. This one is universal. This one we're going to plop down into our downloads folder. Now, what you want to do is click on the. So let me just click on one because I already installed it anyway. You want to go ahead and basically copy all of these. Okay, they are going to replace some existing files. So you want to make sure that you back up your lighting or at least your folders before you do this process. Because if you don't, you are going to lose your original files and we don't really want that. Copy the folders to the right place. And it is always your installation folder. It's not the folder in which you keep your download. When you go into TS Data Res, and lights, this is where you will find the files. Now you could go into your zip file and put down the files individually. Like for example, you can go all the way deep into those folders and just extract the lighting mods, like those three things, and then put that down into here. If you want to do it quicker, you can just do the whole folder and just plop them into your installation folder that is what's probably recommended but if you want to be you know extra and you only want to add the files you do want to go into ts data rest lights and put these things down because these are the important files so these are the ones that are going to make the difference like i said i can't really show you the difference in my game but it's pretty consistent with this i absolutely love it and i feel like you should get it now the big 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 one custom content 
Whether you go for a Maxis match or Alpha CC, there is so much you will never have the exact same game as someone else. No, really. You know how hard that would be? There are millions of different combinations. Though, if you download everything I have in my game through my blog, I guess you and I have about 50% of the same custom content already. How cool is that? Alpha CC is everything that looks like it comes from another game. Max's match basically means matching to the game itself. Sliders, my favorite. Sliders for both Body Shop and Cast will help you transform your sims beyond. Let me show you some of the sliders already in the game. Now let's see the sliders available through Mock. If you have a wider screen than back what was available in 2007, you might want to change your columns. Big gameplay, changing mods, and more. I'm going to explain to you what they do and how to install them. These are just mods I recommend, but since there are so many, it would take me absolutely ages to get through them all. So bear with me while I'm trying to win some time. Unlocked interactions are interactions that usually are not available for every sim, but with this mod, you can do these all the time. So you can, for example, have a sponge bath, look out the window, eat trash, etc. And these are going to go in your downloads folder. This mod improves the speech bubbles, the headlines above your sims, and they give it a nicer texture or it replaces the texture. Whether it's nice or not, you decide so, but you want to put these in your downloads. Parma rent control is something that you can install and when you go into your game, you put this on the wall and you're able to either reduce or increase the rent for your apartments or even just your houses. This is Chris Hatch plan a baby outfit mod. Now this mod is for your baby. So normally you can't really change anything about that. But what you can do is you can change their clothing. So with this mod, you basically install something that looks like a bear. And when you click on the bear, you can then change your Sims clothing. You have to install some extra baby clothes. But with this mod, you can, you know, you can change your baby's outfit, which I think is just really cute. And I definitely think you should you should get it. I think I'm gonna stop saying put this in your downloads folder because everything I'm showing you is probably gonna go in your downloads folder. Transfer lots to all basically allows your sims to pass along lot to another sim. With this mod you can rotate your garage doors and you also have rotatable driveways. This mod allows you to throw a party at any time on any lot. If you want to make different paintings with different shaped canvases, this mod is for you. If you download this mod, everyone that goes to school will be always wearing uniforms, no matter if they go to community school or private school. This mod, you can have a larger household. Be aware, for me, in the past having a lot of sims, it does make it a lot easier for the family to get corrupt. But I'm still going to recommend it because it is a wonderful mod, especially if you do a 100 baby challenge. If you don't have the sim blender with this mod, your sims can also get plastic surgery using this device. This mod is super handy. You can watch TV from all chairs. If the game is too easy for you, you can also download some custom builds. I am highly recommending you to get this supercomputer because you can do so many things with it, including banking, uh, starting a business. Honestly, you can do so many things. I'm honestly forgetting half of it, but like you can go to the store from that computer. Like honestly, there is so much you can do with it. And I highly, 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 highly recommend this. Definitely do get it. You can woohoo with any sim and basically just assign a baby daddy to the child. If teenagers grow up, they usually lose their romantic interest, but with this mod, they keep their interest and they'll stay in love. With this mod, you can have college interactions on any type of lot outside university. With this mod, the outdoor lights will stay on until 7 a.m. instead of 2 a.m. This mod improves the family tree. With this mod, you now get a new memory and it's called the Met New Great Grandchild, which I just think is so sweet. You can now choose a last name for your Sims when they get married. You can now also adopt teens and it also allows you to choose your gender. Now you can select a cemetery after your Sims have died. If you want some new turn-ons, here are some for you. I use this mod quite a lot. It's the child support. So if your sim has a child with somebody that's not in their household, they're going to be paying you child support regularly. Isn't that nice? <laughs> you now do not have a relationship with your baby when they're born. I mean, you can set it to however you like, but for the most part, if you don't want to have a relationship, you don't get one. You can now be mean at all times, which I just love. Brighter roofs because why are they so dark? You can now shift ceiling decoration. Accurate neighborhood terrain lighting. Definitely give this a, a good read, but it 
basically just adds a little bit more of you know dimension to your game not gonna lie these are all from my own mock collection but i would definitely recommend them because i have them all and i feel like they're definitely <laughs> worth getting there's like so many mods and i could spend hours telling you guys about this mod and that mod but i think you guys just need to go on the internet google mods and just <laughs> go on go out there see what's out there and fill up your downloads folder by yourself you really don't need me you, re you really don't now for some mods that are not on my website towny budget mod basically when your sim has a store or a business and a townie wants to buy something if the townie doesn't have much money your sim will try to offer a product and the sim in question, the townie will refuse because they cannot afford such a luxury item. I think this just adds so much realism to having a business. Watering um, inaccessible flowers fix. So this speaks for itself. Now you can water those plants. Yes, you can also trim inaccessible bushes. I guess it is a less harsh way of breaking up. You definitely want to go ahead and read this. I don't have the time to, you know, go through it all, but there's also a adults go steady mod on the same page. So if you guys want to go get that, I recommend that as well. If you do not like a long pregnancy, you can always get a shorter pregnancy mod. Auto save game is perfect for those who forget to save the game. It just automatically remembers you to save. Smart beds is a mod in which your sims will identify where they sleep and they will make sure to always sleep in that bed. So if your sim has ownership of one bed and you buy a new bed, you first gotta unclaim that first bed to then claim the new bed. Gunman's camera mod. Now this one, I am going to explain to you how to install, but basically this allows you to have a wider range of cameras, really increases the range of camera movement. Okay, let me show you guys how to install this. First, you wanna go ahead and download the version that speaks to you the most. So definitely make sure to read all of this to find out which one is the one for you. Then all you have to do is go to your documents, EA games, the Sims 2 cameras and plop all of these in there. And then it's going to ask you to overwrite. And that's all you do to make it work. Oh, and if you don't like it, there is a Maxis camera backup. So they got your back. If you do not like the red pause frame, you can also get a mod for that. And if you don't like the green bottles, you can also get a white one. And lastly, <laughs> a white screen camera fix. So this basically allows you to see more of your sim during cast. Oh, and if you want to hide the objects in cast, you can also get a mod for that. Big gameplay changing mods and more. Now this part of the video will be a bit about my own personal playing style, as well as some common ways to play the game to improve or enhance your gameplay. I personally play the Sims 2 rotation in random orders. See, I don't actually play the game that much because I'm doing let's plays on YouTube and I always make the game corrupt when I do. Might not be the best advertisement for the channel, but hey, I'm on it. Anyway, this is what I would do. Put all the seasons to one season. So let's say summer. We all start out in summer, which means every household. You can make lists, write down things, keep tabs on everyone and play methodically. But I do not like that. I like organization in my life, but not in a game that's just supposed to be relaxing. So I just do whatever feels right. Since we start out in summer, everyone in my hood will be wearing summer outfits the second I get into the game and I play with them. So by the time I've done a full rotation of everyone, the whole hood is in shorts or tank tops. That already makes the world more believable. Sims 2's storytelling mod is a mod that makes the game run pretty similar to The Sims 3. Basically, it allows your sims to do things when you're not playing with them. So remember how in The Sims 4, Sims 3, well, your sims can get married, they have children, and you're not playing with that household? Well, it works exactly the same. I don't use it, but if you are into that kind of thing, definitely check it out. Now for a fun mod, the 18 plus content. Now before YouTube decides to demonetize this section, it is this 18 plus content, but it is child friendly. So we're all good on this end. Yes, you've heard it right. Now I wasn't really sure where to put it, but I think it changes your gameplay. So heck, gameplay it is. I obviously cannot go very much into details. There is in fact a lot of 18 plus content out there that I have made many, many videos about. All child friendly, no bareness, and it's just woohoo. If you're not 18, ask your parents what the definition of woohoo is, because let me tell you, 
I'm not allowed to explain this on YouTube. If you visually like to have some more of the name changes for things, you can download the mod that changes Woohoo into exercising without your clothes on. I wouldn't recommend it if you want to upload on YouTube. Now, an honorable program that I haven't mentioned before, SimPE. I use SimPE for this and that for a bunch of things, but at the moment, I only use it to export sims and to change memories. Let me show you how I do that. This isn't exactly a tutorial in The Sims 2, but this is a tutorial that I think will definitely help you out with your gameplay. If you don't know how to use SimPE, I just want to put a quick disclaimer right here and say that I'm not going to show you how to use or install SimPE in this video. I am only going to show you how to use this program to make your own family trees. To install SimPE, go over to your tools section and click on neighborhood. First, we're going into neighborhood browser and we're going to select a neighborhood that has the sims that we want to give a family tree. A bunch of neighborhoods in here and for the sake of this video I'm going to use a neighborhood that I don't really play in and that I know has a bunch of sims. So I'm gonna go into my cast only world and load that baby up. So you want to wait for it to load first. On your left you have a bunch of options and we want to click on family ties. I'll click again, make the screen a little bigger so we're able to see what I'm doing a bit better. I clicked on the first household in the list. In this household, there are currently two sims, but the sims are not related. We have this guy called 66 and we got Q444. If this is the right sim, I want to click on lock. Now, if you click on another sim, the sim in the picture will not disappear. Whereas if we unlock it and we click on Q, it will skip to her family tree. Be sure to lock the sim before moving on. We're gonna start with 66. As I said before, I'm going to lock it. And underneath you have a little section where it says the name of your sim and the relationship. You cannot click on relation unless you select another sim. Let's say 66 wants a sibling. After locking, right click on the other sim and click on add. As long as you lock your sim, you can change household folders and you can pick anyone you want to be added to the family. Right click on add. If you don't want your sims to have a certain sim in their family tree, click remove. Make sure to click commit. Using another sim, let me show you once more. We're gonna lock her and we're gonna add these four people in her household. Let's add karma. Let's add sunflower and let's add yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my cast household, so I don't usually care about the names in case you're wondering. <laughs> Karma is our parent and maybe Ye could be our crazy, our crazy, let's do child. And Sunflower can be our spouse. Once you're done, click commit. Since we added these sims to her family tree, go to another sims family tree. The sim in particular will also show up in their family tree. So you don't have to go over and do it a few times. Make sure to save the neighborhood before, you know, you leave. And if you did everything correctly, it should look a little like Let's this. Let's take a look at their family tree. So these are the sims that I used. So here's the family tree of Bay, And as you see, her mother is Karma. And then we have Bay, Bay with her spouse Sunflower and yeah 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 guys welcome back to my channel my name is Nana. today i'm going to show you guys how i put my sims up for download how i change my sims personality give them some extra traits or change some basic things about them like their name way after i've created them in cas i will have a link in the description box where you can download that and once you've done that this is where we start at two things we are going to be doing is extracting and potentially changing but we're not going to go into all the other options these are just the two things I'm going to show you and two things that I know the best. You want to go into neighborhood and then click neighborhood browser. And then you want to go and select the neighborhood that you want. 
or think you have a sim in. I'm going to use, I'll use my own world, which is this one, and I'm gonna go and open it. Say we want to go ahead and extract a sim so you want to go into sims surgery and wait for that to load up to bring up this little menu that you can make as big as you want let's pretend we're looking really hard <laughs> to find something very specific I how about this girl so what you want to do is click on the sim and then click patient sim click on use and then you can go ahead and export and it will export as a sim package file that you simply put in your saved sims so that is really all you do. You've gone to neighborhood sim browser and double click on a sim of your liking. It'll bring up this little this little section. And do here is basically change anything. So we can change his name if we don't like that. Um, we can give him a career, give him more than what is usually allowed for a lot of things. For example, we can set his career level. We can set his relationships, we can set his interests. We can also set his preferred gender, so we can literally just make him really attracted to both. Also put every character trait, every, every single one of set them. Everything into a 10 if you really wanted to, change the zodiac sign, give them some skills, romance, fatness, um, other ones. We can give them some flags. I wouldn't fuck around with this too much, honestly, but if you, you know, if you feel like you want to you can obviously do that these are some of the collectibles that you can get as well free time i mean i'm not gonna really go through all of them even though i just did basically where i would change everything about my character if i don't want to do it in game or i really can't there's obviously a lot more that this program has to offer it also shows you kind of like who is with who and you can also give people memories like this there's a lot of things you can actually do but those things I'm not really familiar with really aren't too many. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Potato Head. There's lots of things you can do, but I don't really want to mess around with it too much because I haven't really done those things before. This portion is dedicated to a few subscriber and visitor questions on different topics that I would like to share with you all. First question is how to move dead sims into another lot and what to do. How to move dead sims. Okay, so let's start out by killing uh, a sim. So what am I gonna do exactly? I am going to do this the easiest uh, way that I can think of. I'm gonna get the sim blender and I'm going to age up this guy. Uh, actually, actually, I don't know who this is. I'm gonna age up Blair and we'll just see who that is. Oh, it's the girl, okay. <laughs> so let's age up Blair. And now that she's an elder, we're going to age her up once more. And that should automatically... Blair's dead. And now we're going to click move this grave. What we're going to do is we're going to find... Um, well, I mean, you can technically put her anywhere. But what I want to do is put her into the, um, the graveyard. If there is one. Oh, here it is. Pleasant Rest Graveyard. So we'll just press that. And now, <laughs> I love how she's waving. She's like, bye. Blair's grave will only be moved if you save your game. Blair has died on another lot. She will return in spirit to the place of her death. Now, I'm sure you guys would want me to go <laughs> to the graveyard to confirm that she's in fact there. So I'm gonna go to that same graveyard with um Cyc cyclone sword what kind of name is that that one is from the sims 3 but i haven't really i don't know it's been a while since i've seen any of the sims 3 names and i don't know what to think about it <laughs> so cyclone here is uh, going to the graveyard and we'll meet him there all right so now we have to find oh there she is look she's right here so all we have to do now is go into build mode and we can drag her. Well, we can literally put her any. So I can, I can just place her wherever. Blair is together with the bachelors because she deserves that. She, let's go over to her grave and we can move the grave again. We can move all of them. We can even move her back home place in inventory or simply just mourn it's really not that complicated once you know what to do i hope this answers your question question two is how to have multiple save files in one world i wasn't really sure what you meant with having multiple saves i mean 
it's not like you can really have one world and have six versions of that same world. The only thing that I can think about if you really want to have different copies of the same neighborhood is just to simply copy this folder and whenever you're done with the hood, just put this one back in and then you can start over. If you really want to be, you know, very specific, the only other thing that I haven't ever tried but that I think could technically work, so take my words lightly, is that if this is, for example, the world that you want to copy, you have to have multiple saves of, you can go ahead and copy this folder, but then you'll rename all of the content to EE no, not EE, E002. So this is all going to be called 002. That in theory should make both of these files like E001, E002 show up at the same time. If you want to have multiple, you'll just have to keep on renaming and renaming. That's the only other thing I can think about of how to have multiple saves. Other than that, I cannot think of anything. So I hope this helps. How to fix reshape problems. If you weren't able to solve your problems through my other tutorial, I honestly wouldn't know how to solve any other reshape problems. My only advice would be kind of unconventional, but just go with G-Shape because that has no problems installing, at least for me. And I can't even install the reshape anymore. It just, it just won't work. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sena and today I'm back with another tutorial. Let's get right into it. It has nothing to do with custom content or mods whatsoever. It is something that anyone can do in their game. Doesn't matter which version it is, whether you have six pack or, well, wouldn't we like a six pack? Or, or just one. We have an option to use game content that previously wasn't available for you. You might have noticed that in the Sims games, there are certain items that your Sims can never wear. There are certain hairstyles your Sims can never have. There's also clothing items that only become available once you get to a certain career. In the career, there's also different outfits. You can't actually wear them outside that career. And go ahead and type in bull prop testing cheats and they enabled true when you are in create a sim the first thing you want to do before you're making a new sim is click on your shift and then press n notice that there's three new skin options green one for aliens and of course there is the zombie version i'm not going to go through all the hairstyles and all the clothing but let me just show you guys a few of the options this is cute little farmer's hat I think, no, it's not a farm. I think it's the gardener's hat. There's one for the fire um, department, brigade, would you call that? Burglar's hat, which I think is actually really cute. And I think if we go through it, there are some different, like there, there's many, there's many, let's just say there's many. There's this one from university. There's a <laughs> fucking cheese head. It's a little disturbing, not gonna lie. There's for men, it's also the same. Air fighter, this is the gardener. We have lab coat. What is this? Leather jacket. There's, there's so many things. So if you just wanted to get rid of your body, that's, that's one way to do it. How do we turn this off? Press shift or hold shift and press M. And then it should say create a sim is no longer in debugging mode. Hold shift and N or hold shift and M. That's really all there is. Today I am back with another tutorial for The Sims 2. So today I want to show you guys how to change your baby's or infant's clothing. As you know, The Sims 2 babies are born with diapers and diapers only, bald little babies. And I want to change that. Let's get straight into the video. So two things you need to know about this mod. You need baby clothes and you need a mod to make the baby clothes work. I'm not going to spend too much time linking you guys outfits. I'll have a second video coming up where I have a couple links. So if you want to find some clothing, some direct links to download and not search for yourself, please look at my other video that I uploaded earlier today. I'll have like a link down below. Secondly, you would like, um, well, you would like, you have to download a mod, a mod to make your things show up. So I'm using the Chris Hatch's Plan Baby Outfit mod. Download this mod, put it in your game, and then once you go inside your game, you will find this little teddy bear. Make sure you download both these things. Of course, don't forget to put those in your documents folder. So this PC documents a game seems to download because these are obviously mods. So yeah, let's head straight into game. 
All right, you guys, so here we are in game. But first and foremost, let's get ourselves some babies. So once in game, what you want to do is get yourself a bear. Now this bear is located in your kids section, the children section, and it is a recolor of the Durbly plush teddy bear and this is the girls fuzzy bear which your sims can actually play with them your kids but this is what you need if you want to be able to change your sims clothes so you can't go to the mirror and change your baby's clothes like that it doesn't work um but i'll demonstrate it just so you guys have a clue how that works okay that i wasn't okay well cutscene first all right so here comes our first baby And there comes our second baby, both wearing exactly the same. So this one is a girl, this one seems to be a girl as well. Only when you use mods to change your baby's, you know, your, your baby's outfit, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're all going to be wearing the same thing. Baby actually turned out to be a boy and he's wearing something completely different. So let me just wait for Nina to also give birth and then I will check out the... Alright, so here we have our our set of babies so as you can see these two were born with the same outfit and these two number four and number two are actually wearing th the same set but it's different colors so a mod like this install it'll basically kind of switch through the different types of clothing so just because you have one default replacement or non-default replacement doesn't necessarily mean that your sim is only going to be born with one so that's really nice it's going to go it's gonna give you some variety maybe not a ton of variety but you can always change it afterwards so i guess it doesn't matter that much so let's say we want this baby to um i mean we can literally change it to anything now it may look a little bit creepy like this but you have to imagine that this wasn't made for you know for sims it wasn't something that the game had for offer now we don't have a lot of money so let's just only buy one and plan our everyday outfit for number four and then she should come over and um, we should be able to pick. There we go. And there you go. Your baby now has a full set of hair and a different kind of pajama. I could is do that too. hair. Let's do something with like a little hat. Okay, this is kind of cute. So we're going to have to buy that. And then we can plan our outfit currently in our everyday wear. And that's why we can't see it. So let's dress her in her pajamas. Okay, there we go. This is option number two. I must say this is a really cute baby. That is literally all there is to this mod. It should work for everyone. So definitely let me know if there's any problems, but I don't expect any. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. There is honestly so many things I could talk about and include in this video, but I think I've handled most of the important ones. Of course, there's stuff that I have missed or that I don't even know about, but that doesn't mean that I think it's necessarily important to include in this video. See, it's all up to your own interpretation anyway. The way that I build my world, the way that you build your world, it's all really personal preference. I'm just telling you how I would do things. I could be wrong as well. In any case, this is everything that I could think of that I thought you guys definitely should know. And do let me know what you guys think of it. It took me almost a month to make this because I had to redo so many things. But... I am very, 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 very happy to be finally done with it. I also have a playlist with individual parts from this video so you can check out the parts that interest you the most or if you want to watch everything in your own time, you don't want to sit through, you know, one and a half hours of footage, feel free to just go there, do whatever you feel like. Anyway, thank you all so much for supporting my channel, for, <laughs> for trusting me to um, make this video and to, you know, to share some of my uh, my tips and tricks with you guys and I hope that you guys think it's um, everything you ever wanted and needed and yeah I don't know <laughs> thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you guys all in my next video bye